Hello, I'm James Maxwell and I'm one of the staff horticulturalists at Rogers Gardens and today I'm in the beautiful San Clemente meeting with Chris and Dave Ethington. They are the 2018 winners of the California Friendly Garden Contest. Hello and thank you for having us. Thanks for being here. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. First and foremost, what, were your, what was your inspiration and your motivation uh, for, the, for the garden? Um, well, our, our remodel um, was to create this craftsman um, architecture and we wanted to make sure that we were consistent with what we thought um, California uh, style gardening would be and um, so we are very much into nature, gardening for nature and um, wanted to make sure that our garden was um, very um, coastal friendly um, for the uh, benefit of, um, of the ocean friendly mm -hmm. and um, with the pollinators in mind so most of the plants um, are um, feel very organic to this region and are um, responsive to the conditions of the coastal influence. Well thank you very much and a big, a big question for me was, what was your neighbours and friends' response to the, uh, to the decision and the style of the garden? Well, I think that um, being that we were uh, doing this project was a large project and they were um, watching a lot of dirt for a long time, they were very pleased when they started to see the front come together in addition to how it connected to the house. And um, they, uh, we have a lot of walkers in our neighbourhood and a lot of people that we um, we're out here working and, and uh, you know in the garden and, and adding things and they really did respond well. Of course the, um, the Matilla hop poppies over here um, have been you know a showstopper um, this season and uh, our very close neighbors are all just you know very excited to see those plants and uh, I think people in the neighborhood have um, really responded well and We've met a lot of people, we really have. Um, right. We've gotten to know a lot of people that they may live on our street or they may live several streets away or mm -hmm. just choose to walk our hill. <laughs> well, excellent. Uh, another question for you. How has the garden impacted uh, or encouraged uh, uh, habitat and wildlife? It's incredible how much alive it is. In mm -hmm. fact, I, I, um, I'm self-employed, so I have the flexibility to come out and to uh, work in a home office. and. And I, I, I'm drawn out here at certain times of the day just to take a kind of mental break and, and sit in this location and watch the pollinators, the butterflies. We've taken a lot of um, photography um, to capture um, the changing garden and uh, the wildlife uh, in the garden. And then this is a, another big one for me. What was and why was your decision to use all native plants? I think that um, I had dabbled in native plants um, years ago and then when we had this opportunity to uh, start with a clean slate we took out um, uh, turf and um, uh, the bank in the back of us here um, and we um, decided that we wanted to be both low water and um, environmentally friendly uh, again to the ocean and to the wildlife. Um, and so it just, um, it was consistent with, um, it's, a, it's a challenge to do that completely, but it's, it's worth it. Um, our water bill is low, obviously that's, that's one of the aspects, but it's, it's much more beyond that. I mean, I love the flowers. Mm -hmm. I love the changing garden. We have these couple of manzanitas here. Mm -hmm. So a question for you, Dave. Uh, I know you've been kind of part and, and, and uh, uh, maybe uh, kind of the leader on the the irrigation and saving water and some of the technology involved in that. Maybe you could speak a little bit about that. Well, some of the things that we did, you know, everything is passive uh, um, in in the uh, maintaining the runoff. You know, we we capture the water off off the roof. We capture them here in in the uh, dry well. Um, 
we rather than rain barrels, but we wanted to you know mm -hmm. keep all the water with a strike that balance between keeping the water on the property when you need it, and then anytime there's more than you need, you get it off the property. But you want it to, to run through the garden as best you can so that you get it. But but you want it for the plants, but not you know taking your hill away because sure. unfortunately that's that's a, an issue here when you're on a hill. Um, erosion, uh, slope stabilization, and things. So, all these plants were chosen with with slope stabilization in mind. Um, the uh, uh, matillahas are, you know, great for that, and a few others on the on the back hill, um, which is a much bigger problem. But um, you, know, you have to control runoff, and 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 yet keep everything, you know, looking nice and and not bunch of retaining walls. And the dry wells, um, which are two foot deep, or three foot deep, th two foot wide, um, funneled from the, the roof, they um, have gravel and um, heavy duty landscape material um, that wrapped in there. And, and so water is filtered, uh -huh. not only. So even if the water is in excess of what can permeate through or percolate through the, the surrounding area, it's still going in there and it's filtering in all the sediment and pollutants that might come off the roof or, mm -hmm. or then staying in the ground. Wow, interesting. So it sounds like you've made big savings in, in water conservation yeah, with the technology. There's, there's no irrigation system here other than hand watering. Um, Which we do every three to four weeks in the sunnier locations. And this area here that's close to the house um, is um, planted in a more of a part shade, semi dry, so I might, you know, supplement a water that mm -hmm. more frequently, but still not, you know, every couple of weeks instead of three. Sure. Um, and so our water usage is really low Great. and our plants obviously are very happy and, and lush. And um, in fact, they, they tend to grow bigger than they're actually supposed to. <laughs> well, I think that should be an inspiration in itself, just yeah. on the, the savings you've made with, with water, you know. Well, and most people don't, don't believe us that we don't water all the time. They just, they, you know, they'll say, oh, you must be out there. If you don't have a sprinkler system, you must be out there all the time. And um, in, our, in our old house, we had 18 separate zones and you can't even install a system that allows you to, to program every three weeks. Mm -hmm. They're set on a minimum once a week. That's, that's the best you can do is once a week um, they don't have a setting for once every three weeks. Sure. And the sure. and the mulching is essential. We get a lot of wind. Yeah. Uh, a lot of wind here, and it can be you could get a rain, and then the wind, and it just dries out really fast. Uh, and the the mulching and watering in the mulch and the surrounding areas makes a huge difference. I've we noticed use, you've used the, the shredded mulch, which... Yeah, this is a, sh a cedar, um, a one species cedar mulch. Okay. And um, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't do it over more mm -hmm. than I need to, but spruce it up, uh, you know, once a year. Um, and uh, it's, it makes all the difference. That and, and planting in clusters and allowing mm -hmm. the plant material to really help, all the plants help each other. And you notice the secret is to plant and, and just let them fight it out and and the ones you know and you, sometimes you got to help like this manzanita is getting you know hidden a little too much uh -huh. but, but you know it's, it's happy it's, it'll change so so what's the thickness of the mulch you have down is it um i would say you know it looks like it's probably got about a two inches now you know mm -hmm. some areas where where it drains more i have to you know add up it'll yeah. it'll move but it it starts out a little bit um, thicker, and then it gets more on the sticky stickier side, um, you know, on the uh, surface. But I don't. I think people are afraid with native plants to put down mulch, and um, but you just have to protect the crown. And and I think most of the plants that I've selected for this coastal environment um, have uh, thrived as a result of having that. And uh, final question, maybe you could touch upon some of your favorite plants which have been incorporated into the garden. You go ahead and go first, Dave. <laughs> well, my favorite is the Lester Roundtree Manzanita. Um, that, that, you know, it, it's a little hidden right now, but, but you know, it's got really interesting uh, 
structure and the bark and you know I can't wait till it grows up and becomes a true specimen in this yard. The lesser round tree and the both the other manzanita, which is um, the uh, bird hill behind me, um, have great structure. They are um, they're only two years in the ground and they're growing leaps and bounds. They're very happy and that will give us a lot of uh, uh, visible, I think, really well connected to the house's uh, um, structure or architecture. It's hard for me to say which I like the most. Uh -huh. um, I just, I really love the Matillaha. I planted mm -hmm. two more in the back because we love that one so much. Um, they do, um, uh, they're, I mean, it, that was a fragile uh, slope mm -hmm. section and um, they took, they say plant two because one might not make Fail. it. Sure. Well, they both made it. Wow. Um, so um, I'm lucky that way. Um, I love, um, the uh, obviously the the native milkweed behind mm -hmm. us here um, I love the the pollinator benefit not just for the monarchs um, is one of my favorites and 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 the yarrow on the slope is is you know our best friend because you know I threw seeds out and um, it's got a kind of a wild uh, sporadic um, distribution um, to it and um, the pollinators just love it all love the little it, butterflies sure. Great. Well, it's you kind of you've got a lot to choose from. You really have. So, anyway, on behalf of Rogers Gardens, I want to say thank you very much on being our grand prize winners, and uh, maybe you'll treasure this for years to come. Thank you. Thank we you are, very much. We are very honoured to be a, one of your grand prize winners. Thank you very much. Once again, my name is James Maxwell, and Rogers Gardens brings beauty into your home and garden.